Forget frequently asked questions. Common sense. Common knowledge. Or Google. How about advice from a real genius? 95% of people in any profession are good enough to be qualified and licensed. 5% go above and beyond. They become very good at what they do. But only 0.1% a real geniuses. Richard Jacobs has made it his life's mission to find them for you. He hunts down and interviews geniuses in every field. Sleep science, cancer, stem cells, ketogenic diets, and more. Here come the geniuses. This is the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius Podcast. I have uh, Dr. Kathleen Mullen. She goes by Kate. Uh, she's the medical director at uh, Stanford for NEICR. We're going to talk about uh, migraines, and um, the rest of it's a bit technical. I'll let her explain, but research around migraines and, and medications. So, Kate, thanks for coming. How are you doing? I'm good, Rich. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, are you working on a specific medication for migraines, or what's uh, what's your work about? So, I am a clinical physician. So, I have been seeing. I am a neurologist. Uh, by training, and then I did an, an additional what's called a fellowship year um, specifically for headache medicine, and I've been seeing strictly headache patients um, since my first day of fellowship, so for over 10 years, that's all I do, and that's all I see, um, and in addition to my clinical practice where, you know, I see and treat patients like a doctor would, uh, we run research trials where uh, pharmaceutical companies approach us because of our patient population when they have a potential new drug coming down the pipeline, um, and we recruit patients from our practice to see if they would like to try potentially new and different uh, migraine medications. Okay, and w- so what's the latest and greatest in the migraine medication? It looks well, like there's a, a new one that's coming. Yes, so actually the most recently FDA approved migraine medication, and there actually has been sort of a, a slew of them in the past year um, after decades of nothing, but the most recent is called Nurtec, um, which is what's called the CGRP antagonist. Um, So to sort of break that down, CGRP is a known neuropeptide that we all have floating around our bloodstream, um, and it's been shown that migraine patients um, have higher levels of CGRP when they're having a migraine. If you have a history of migraine headaches and someone injects you with CGRP, you can induce a migraine. So this medication, Nurtec, it it, uh, binds to the CGRP receptor so that CGRP can't be activated. Um, and it's taken acutely when you have a headache to stop the headache in its tracks. Okay. Well, so what, what is the mechanism by which uh, it appears to work? So CGRP is not involved in the vascular component of migraines. All of our old medications, what's called the triptans, they, they primarily worked on the vascular portion of headaches. CGRP works on the inflammatory portion. So we know that it needs to be involved in the activation of what's called the inflammatory cascade, which is sort of another arm of the migraine pathophysiology. So by blocking CGRP's activation, Nurtec stops that whole cascade from continuing. So, well, I guess I'm not too familiar with with headaches and migraines. What is the cascade of not just symptoms, but what's going on physiologically? Or do we not understand, you know, know why migraines occur? Yeah, well, we know portions of it. So we know that migraines are genetic. There's a certain, um, a very specific kind of migraine that you can actually test if you have that gene in your bloodstream. Um, we think it's probably multifactorial, that there's lots of different genes that, that play a role. But if you see a headache patient that has migraines, odds are there's someone else in the family that also gets them. Uh, we know that the very first phase of migraine, um, there's sort of an electrochemical change in the brain. Um, some patients see an aura, a visual aura during that time. Following that, there's a vascular component where oftentimes the blood vessels expand and the expansion of these blood vessels can oftentimes cause the pain itself. When those blood vessels are expanded, the walls become more permeable. So inflammatory markers start to leak out and they start to adhere to pain receptors and pain sensitive fibers. So sort of at, at least three phases that we know of. And as I said, the old medications, the triptans, they, one of their jobs was to constrict the blood vessels and to shrink them back down, uh, which has a role, but unfortunately for patients that had any vascular risk factors, and by that I mean, you know, if you have coronary artery disease, right, so your coronary blood vessels are already narrow, the last thing you'd want to do is to sh- potentially shrink them further. So if you have a history of a heart attack or chest pain or strokes, those medications were contraindicated in those patients because we just didn't want to risk shrinking down their blood vessels further. So this is the first medication that's targeted 
the other pathway of migraine, which is the, the inflammatory one, and this medication, because it doesn't involve the blood vessels, is actually safe in those patients with all of those risk factors. Yeah, that makes sense, right? And you wouldn't want to have someone have a stroke or a, a clot to suddenly you know, completely occlude a vessel. Exactly. Their, so, uh, their vessels tighten up. So for 10 years, the triptans were, came to market in the, the early 90s. And for, since then, unfortunately for our cardiovascular patients, we would say, you know, we can't really give you the standard of care because of, you know, your underlying disease. So we'd sort of have to give them, you know, some subpar treatment, acute treatment regimens. Um, so this is the first time that we can finally offer them a medication that's made for their disease. So um, again, how does this new medication work now? The, the other pathway you said is inflammatory, but you know, what specifically, I mean, maybe so, you can't say, but how does well, it work? So we, we know that CGRP has to bind to its receptor to activate. And what this does by being an antagonist is it, the Nurtec floats in and it, it antagonizes, it adheres to the receptor in the place of CGRP so that when CGRP floats around and tries to dock essentially at its receptor, the Nurtec is already in its place. So the, um, the person experiences, do they, do they experience any parts of the migraine? Like, you know, people that have them, do they know, sure. oh, okay, it's coming, I can feel it, and do they experience a whole cascade or do they, like the migraine comes out of nowhere and hits them? Well, so that's, that's a good question. Migraines actually have multiple phases. There are some patients that have what's called um, a prodrome, where they feel they have different appetite cravings, they can feel a little bit lethargic, Sometimes they have um, different changes in their bowel or bladder habits. The next phase is sometimes the aura, which again is not all patients, but there are some patients that actually see what's called spread, spreading cortical depression. They actually have visual changes before the pain. Then there's the painful phase, which we sort of all think about as the only phase, and that's the throbbing, oftentimes one-sided headache. Usually people get either sensitive to light uh, and or sounds, they want to lie down. They don't really want to do any of their activities. Oftentimes there's nausea, sometimes to the point of vomiting. That's sort of the classic migraine that we think about. Um, the patients in the trials were asked to treat their headaches when their pain, they were in their pain phase and that the pain was at least moderate. So for most patients, when they're experiencing a headache, they feel a little bit of that sort of the pain is coming, whether it's the aura or just a mild pain and they sort of know their patterns. And they know that the pain is going to develop into a migraine. So are you at the point now where people have taken this drug and they've reported what happened to them? So I was one of the principal investigators in the, um, the trials that proved the medication not only worked but was safe. So I have a long-standing history of, of patients' experience with this medication because I even had patients on it before it came to market. Um, and I had patients who enrolled in this trial because they just weren't satisfied with prior medications, whether they weren't working for them they're giving them side effects. And I have actually one patient in, in mind who was 50 plus years old. She had 30 years of migraines and had just been through everything. And the problem with the triptans is that if you have really frequent headaches, you can get something called medication overuse headache, where if you take it too often, you actually de develop more headaches. So there's always sort of this, do I or do I not treat when you get a headache? And this patient has been doing that game for 30 years. And in the trial, she actually had such success with Nurtec um, over a year. She was in the year-long 52-week uh, safety trial that when it ended, um, I actually had to apply for the FDA for an extension for her to keep taking it between the bridge of, of the trial ending and the medication coming to market because it worked so well for her that she just did not want to go back to the old standard of care. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um... Like, like specifically, what do people tell you when they take it? Do they say that migraine starts and then just sits there and never fully develops or so feel for nothing? Most, like for most of what we consider to be an effective treatment is one that kicks in within two hours, ideally pain freedom, but we'll take pain relief if it's significant and you're able to go back to your normal life. So it's one thing if you feel better, but the medication you took had so many side effects that you sort of can't do what you wanted to do anyways because you feel braggy or dizzy. Um, and the patients, what patients report back to me about this medication is that not only can they get back to what, whatever they were doing, sort of their normal quality of life within two hours, but that they don't have any of those side effects. So the headache is gone and they can go back to doing whether it's work or a family obligation. They don't, they don't have to lose the day. And that's, a very different experience than what a lot of my patients have had with prior medications because oftentimes either they weren't effective or they did help 
but they just made the patient feel not themselves. So that's the biggest takeaway that I've had from my patients in practice is that they're so surprised that it's not only effective, but they also still feel normal. Hmm. Um, is, has anyone gotten to the point where it's long-term use and they've been using it for, let's say, six months or they've used it, you know, 50 times? And what's happened to them? So, you know, the, it just came to market. So in clinical practice, we don't have that kind of experience. But again, you, you know, Biohaven, the company who developed the drug, did a 52-week trial where patients were given enough pills to take um, if they needed to every day of, of those 52 um, months, weeks. So patients did take, I think the most was maybe 18 to 20 pills in a month. Um, and they, they continued to have positive results. There was no increased side effects over the 52 weeks. There was no reduce in efficacy over 52 weeks. So there's no reason to think that if a patient needs it more often that they'll get medication overuse. So the long-term safety data and efficacy data looked really, really good. And, you know, I, there's no reason to think that that won't pan out in, you know, in true clinical practice. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. It's really um, a breakthrough. What about for, uh, is, this, is this only indicated for migraines or what about like run-of-the-mill headaches? So this is only studied in patients with migraine. Migraine is a clinical diagnosis, so it's not something that you can get, you know, an MRI or a blood test to verify or prove. It's those characteristics that I described. If you're a doctor, and unfortunately, and we're really trying to get the word out there because migraine is really underdiagnosed, um, but if your doctor labels you as being a migraineur, then this medication would be appropriate for you. What's called tension type headaches, which are generally sort of more dull, whole head squeezing pain. Uh, this has not been studied in those headache types, so there's no indication for that as of yet. Oh, it's that specific where, uh, you know, like the, the type of headache, like, you know, why, why not try this for uh, the different types of headaches? Or is it, I mean, it has to be so careful that it's only for one specific well, yeah. flavor of headache? When something is FDA approved for a certain condition, you're really, you know, to be on label, you have to only prescribe it in that condition. And one of the reasons that I love headache medicine is that there's something called the ICHG, the International Headache um, Classification Diagnosis, where you, um, you get these sort of check, you know, if you have one-sided pain with throbbing and light sensitivity, then you have this headache type. If it's bilateral pain and it's more pressure, like it's this headache type. If it's nighttime headache, and it's just this really nice, neat chart. Unfortunately, most real-life headache patients don't perfectly fall into those columns, but I'm a type A organized person, and I like the idea of these diagnoses being perfectly grouped. So yes, you do have to have a diagnosis of migraine to qualify for the medication. Is there a push to, uh, you know, to get it in use for other headaches? Or, like, well, you know, why would there be, why wouldn't there be? Well, so tension type headache, which is worldwide the most common headache, but oftentimes not seen in, in physicians' offices because they can generally be treated with over-the-counter medications. You know, if you have one of those band-like pressure headaches, you take three Advil. For the most part, you feel better. They're nowhere near as disabling. Migraines affect almost 40 million people in the U.S., and it's the, the World Health Organization's one of the top 10 most disabling headaches, most disabling conditions. So mm -hmm. we look to treat migraine because of that combination. It is so prevalent and it is so disabling. Luckily, our other headache types are either few and far between or like tension type headache, probably even more prevalent, but much, much more easily treated and therefore not as disabling. What about, uh, you know, brain tumors or other conditions that, uh, other conditions that cause headaches? So is there any uh, look to, you know? So when we talk about um, headaches, before we go into migraine, tension type headaches, cluster headaches, those are primary headaches. Those are headaches that are not attributable, attributable to another condition. Secondary headaches are headaches from subarachnoid hemorrhages, brain tumors, eye strain. So those are headaches that we have to make sure we're not dealing with the secondary headache as by sometimes doing imaging or blood work before we fall into that whole ICHG primary headache classification. Um, but generally, mm -hmm. secondary headaches are treated by treating whatever that underlying condition is. So you, you can take anti-inflammatories, for example, to help the inflammation of a brain tumor, but the, real, the way you're going to really fix the pain of a brain tumor is by removing the brain tumor. Oh, right. I just thought maybe it would, it would help for uh, other conditions too. But uh, I mean, so... 
what's the state of it now? Like what, what percentage of the migraine market and practitioners know about this new drug? And uh, I mean, is your job now to, to help spread the word about it? Or? Yeah, so my job, <laughs> because I love my patients and I advocate for them constantly, is really to get the word out to primary care doctors. Headache doctors know about these medications. We've been looking for new, better, innovative ways to treat our headache patients for decades. But headache doc, you know, lots of headache patients don't make their way to headache doctors. So we're really trying to get the word out to general neurologists who see a lot of headache patients, as well as primary care physicians, because headache is something that a lot of patients will just discuss with their general practitioner. And if they don't know that Nurtec exists, uh, then they're not going to offer it to the migraine patients, which is heartbreaking because, again, it's one of the best things we've seen in a long time for our patients. So, but what's involved now in uh, making sure that enough people know about it? I mean, it's a massive... It's a massive undertaking. So Biohaven does have a direct-to-consumer campaign. So no one is better than advocating for you than yourself. So patients see the press, they see, you know, they read it in the paper, they see the commercials, and they bring it themselves to their primary care doctor. Um, obviously, the, the pharmaceutical company itself, you know, is doing what it can to get its name out there. I go on um, lectures to libraries, not for pharmaceutical companies, but to talk about our clinical trials and to talk about um, opportunities for migraine sufferers. And I say to at every talk that I give, I say to the, the patients or the people that come and listen, go back to your doctor. There are new medicines. If you feel like you've tried everything, you haven't, you know, even in the past months, medicines such as Nurtec have come to market and it's worth reevaluating, readdressing, and reexamining these new acute medications because they're different and it's worth trying something different even if you think you've been through it all. So I'm doing personal platform to every, every local library that I can, but you're right, it's a giant undertaking to make 40 million Americans aware of a new medication for them. Well, you can't say it's a cure, can you? But what can you say? It's just a treatment for yeah. migraine? Like, what are you allowed to say? So you cannot say it's a cure, and I say to my patients all the time, you know, it's a lot about judging, um, dealing with expectations, and I always tell them, we're going to do our best to prevent headaches, and if, should you get one, because there is no cure, you might still break through and get a headache, we'll have something to treat it, but right, we never use the word cure with migraine, because like I said, a lot of it is, is in your DNA, and until we can modify and change that, um, which I don't think I see in my lifetime, we're going to have to have a toolkit of, of medications to, to address it. So what we call Nurtec is a, an acute medication. An acute medication is medication that you take as needed when the pain starts. Um, although what the company Biohaven noticed in their long-term trial was that patients that were taking the medication acutely over the course of the trial were having less and less headaches. Um, so now we're looking into whether or not this medication could actually be used as a preventative as well. And the early data looks positive. So if that pans out, this would be the first medication that migraine patients ever have that they can sort of play with in terms of, do I take this on a standing basis to prevent the headaches or do I take it as needed and when a headache comes, which will give them an incredible amount of freedom and flexibility that they've never seen with their medications before. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, All it, right, uh, if it pans out where it can be used in both ways, both prevention and acute, it would be game-changing for, for migraine patients. Yeah, no, that's true. Well, um, some of the people that have used it longest, you know, like approximately how long have they used it and how many times and, you know, are they reporting that, okay, now they don't fear migraines anymore because they can really head them off at the pass? Yeah. So I have to say probably the patient that used, used it the longest might be my own patient because when the clinical trial, the, the year-long clinical trial was over, um, there were only two, two or three patients who asked for that sort of extended access program so they could continue to take the medication, you know, in the bridge between the trial ending and it coming to market. And now that's on market, she's still using it. Um, so these patients are using it, you know, it depends on how often their headaches are. Uh, the, the, the study was for patients with episodic migraines. So patients ideally had less than 15 headache days per month. Um, on average, patients were taking the medications about eight times per month for that year. Um, and, and throughout the time, you know, they had wonderful success with it. They had no side effects. Uh, it worked really well. Um, I think there were over 118,000 dosages given 
over the course of that 52 week trial, just to give you an idea of how much exposure there was to the medication um, in the long term study. Part of this education effort, that's why you know I'm glad to help do this podcast. Um, what's the best way for people to find out more? You know, like you said, it's hereditary. So if anyone has one or someone in their family, you know, has it, where can they go to find out more about this drug? Well, so headaches in general, as I said, unfortunately, are wildly underdiagnosed. So the the first thing they should do if they think they have migraines is to go see um, their doctor. If you've ever had a headache that made you feel like you had to cancel something, odds are that's a migraine because tension type headaches, for the most part, you're able to push through. And nobody should have more than one migraine without something in their toolkit to treat it. So first things first is just, again, my advocating for my headache patients. There's no such thing as, quote, a normal headache. So if you have a tension type headache, that's a tension type headache. If it's more severe, if it makes you feel like you want to be sick, if it makes you feel like you turn the lights off, that's a migraine. And there's wonderful treatments, including Nurtec, this newest one, to treat your migraine. So go to the doctor. If you want to see if you think Nurtec is right for you, um, you can, they can go to nurtec.com. It's N-U-R-T-E-C. Uh, click on patient information and just learn about how it works, the safety profile, how they can get it. So um, most of these newer drugs have what's called copay assist plans where they make the medication incredibly affordable. So even though it's this sort of new, game-changing, um, innovative medication that's potentially very expensive, uh, Biohaven is working with patients because they are incredible patient advocates for migraine patients and they know that the most important thing is relief. So they're gonna let patients experience that relief without having to pay through the nose. Yeah, no, that's great, excellent. Well, very good. Um, I appreciate you coming. Any any final thoughts or things I didn't ask you about? I should have. Uh, no, I think that you know that's the the major point is that if you have a migraine, go see your doctor. And and it's my job and Biohaven's job to make sure that your doctor knows about Nurtec and the the latest changes in migraine medicine, so that we can make our patients better faster. Okay, thanks for coming. Thank you so much. My pleasure. You've been listening to the Finding Genius Podcast with Richard Jacobs. If you like what you hear, be sure to review and subscribe to the Finding Genius Podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. And want to be smarter than everybody else? Become a premium member at FindingGeniusPodcast.com. This podcast is for information only. No advice of any kind is being given. Any action you take or don't take as a result of listening is your sole responsibility. Consult professionals when advice is needed.